Europe was transformed by Renaissance ideas and values in the 16th century. Its influence was felt in art, architecture, philosophy, literature, music, science, technology, politics, religion and other aspects of intellectual inquiry. Renaissance artists brought their paintings and sculptures to life with perspective, realism and anatomy. They experimented with different media such as oil paintings and fresco to create more vivid and lasting colours. They celebrated humanist themes such as individualism, human dignity and beauty in their work. Renaissance scientists revolutionised astronomy, mathematics, physics, medicine and engineering. They defied the church of the Aristotelian worldview that enslaved medieval thoughts. They championed reason, observation and experimentation as the paths to knowledge and truth. Renaissance writers wrote in vernacular languages instead of Latin, making their works more readable to the broader audience. They explored the human condition and the complexities of life, challenged the authority of tradition and religion and voiced their own opinions and emotions. They used humour, irony and wit to expose the vices and follies of their society. The Protestant Reformation erupted with Martin Luther who condemned the corruption and abuses of the Catholic Church. The Reformation spawned various Protestant denominations. Two kingdoms in different halves of the same century flourished in their golden age. Suleiman personally led Ottoman armies in numerous campaigns that brought him fame and glory. His first major conquest was Belgrade, which secured Ottoman control over the Balkans. He then captured Rhodes, ending the rule of Knights of St John and gaining access to eastern Mediterranean. In 1526 he defeated the Hungarian army, killing King Louis II and opening the way for the Ottoman expansion into Central Europe. Suleiman's last military act was to lead a massive army of over 100,000 troops from Constantinople in 1566, aiming to take Vienna. He reached Belgrade when he received news of a raid on his camp, which provoked his anger and determination to capture Zigetvar. He marched towards a fortress and began the siege. He died before the final assault that resulted in an Ottoman victory. At the end of Suleiman's reign, the Ottoman Empire had reached its peak of expansion and power, spanning from Hungary to Iran and from Crimea to North Africa. Suleiman issued a single legal code covering areas such as criminal law, land tenure and taxation all the while being careful not to violate the basic laws of Islam. Under his patronage, the Ottoman Empire entered the golden age of its cultural development. Hundreds of imperial artistic societies were administered to the imperial seat, the Topkapı Palace. Suleiman became renowned for sponsoring a series of monumental architectural developments within his empire. The greatest of these were built by the Sultan's chief architect, Mimar Sinan, under whom Ottoman architecture reached its zenith. Sinan became responsible for over 300 monuments throughout the empire. Breaking with Ottoman tradition, Suleiman married Hurem Sultan, a woman from his harem, who became famous in the West by the name of Roxelana, due to her red hair. Hurem wanted her son to succeed Suleiman. Suleiman's closest friend and confidant, Ibrahim, supported his other son, Mustafa, as a successor. This caused disputes between him and Hurem. Ibrahim eventually fell from grace with the Sultan, who ordered him to be assassinated. During the campaign against Persia, hearing rumours of Mustafa 
planning a rebellion angered Suleiman. He called Mustafa to his tent and let his men kill his own son. After a rebellion, Suleiman's other son Bayezid was also executed, along with four grandsons on Suleiman's orders. At the end, the most unlikely candidate, Hurem's son Selim II, became the successor. Suleiman allowed Hurem to remain with him at court for the rest of her life, breaking all tradition. Historians often depict the Elizabethan era as it's the golden age in English history. It was a brief period of internal peace after the Hundred Years' War and the War of the Roses in the previous century. When the Queen's first Parliament opened in 1559, its chief goal was the difficult task of reaching a religious settlement. The Act of Supremacy of 1558 re-established the Church of England's independence from Rome and Parliament conferred on Elizabeth the title of Supreme Governor of the Church of England. The Act of Uniformity of 1559 reintroduced the Book of Common Prayer from Edward's reign which contained the liturgical services of the Church. In 1571 the 39 Articles were adopted as a confessional statement for the Church and a Book of Homilies was issued outlining the Church's reformed theology in greater detail. This golden age saw the flowering of poetry, music and literature. English poetry was characterised by elaboration of language and extensive allusions to classical myths. The era is most famous for its theatre as William Shakespeare and many others composed plays that broke free of England's past style of theatre. Shakespeare wrote plays in a variety of genres, including histories, tragedies, comedies and the late romances or tragicomedies. Philosophers and intellectuals like Francis Bacon and Thomas Hobbes wrote on empiricism and materialism. Bacon's work is seen as developing the scientific method and remained highly influential through the scientific revolution. Elizabeth made naval strength a high priority. She risked war with Spain by supporting the sea dogs, such as John Hawkins and Francis Drake, who preyed on the Spanish merchant ships carrying gold and silver from the New World. The English navy yards were leaders in technical innovation and the captains devised new tactics. The Elizabethan age was also an age of plots and conspiracies, frequently political in nature and often involving the highest levels of Elizabethan society. High officials in Madrid, Paris and Rome sought to kill Elizabeth, a Protestant, and replace her with Mary, Queen of Scots, a Catholic. That would be a prelude to the religious recovery of England for Catholicism. Mary was executed and died by decapitation after being involved in a conspiracy to assassinate her cousin, Queen Elizabeth. To restore Catholicism, King Philip II of Spain sent a large naval fleet called the Spanish Armada to invade England. It consisted of about 130 ships and 30,000 men, including soldiers and sailors. The Armada sailed from Lisbon to join forces with the Spanish army in the Netherlands. However, it was attacked by English ships led by Francis Drake and Charles Howard as it sailed up the channel. It was forced to scatter by English fire ships at Calais where it was supposed to meet Palmer's army. It suffered heavy losses in the Battle of Gravelines, 
where the English guns proved superior to the Spanish ones. It was driven northward by unfavourable winds and had to return to Spain by sailing around Scotland and Ireland. Many ships were wrecked by storms or ran out of supplies on the way back. The defeat of the Armada was a major blow to Spain's prestige and power in Europe. It also boosted the morale and confidence of England and its Protestant allies. Spanish Armada is considered one of the most important events in European history as it marked the decline of Spain's dominance and the rise of England's naval supremacy.